So we know that 2000 years ago Jesus Christ died for the lost tribes of Israel, for the entire Israel. And the ones who believed in Jesus followed him. God destroyed the old land and now we see that the followers of Christ spread the gospel more and more all through Europe and Christianity started to develop more and more. And we see that Christianity spread all through Europe and Europe started to develop nations based on God's laws. And these nations became prosperous and free. But the vagabonds who were among Europe, they never had any rights because it were Christian nations. But around 250 years ago, there was a new law to give those vagabonds the equal rights. And now it became freedom of religion. But this freedom of religion was against the oppression of the Roman Catholic Church and to give Jews equal rights to live in the nations. And that was like it was. They changed the Bible, made it seem that Jews and Christians both worshipped the same God. But it was not until after the Second World War that suddenly also other peoples were drawn in to the God's nations. Right. In, in the reconstruction of the European nations after the war, they drew people from Turkey and from Morocco and, and all kinds of people into Holland to help them rebuild the country. But they said it was only temporary to offer them a job to rebuild. But of course the plan was that these people would never leave. Now you had freedom of religion that meant that all kinds of people with different gods were drawn into Europe. And this was the start of the plan to change God's nations. So I don't see really a problem if people want to come into God's nations. But the Bible is very specific. If foreigners come also they have to abide by God's laws. And also I believe if you want to go to another nation you have to also love the God of those nations and also love the culture and be willing to be part of society. But do these people from Morocco really appreciate living in these free prosperous nations? For if you look where they came from, I understand that the, the land of Allah and all that he had, there was not much. So of course they took the opportunity to come into a free nation where there is wealth and prosperity, milk and honey. So these first generation Moroccan families made children. They were born in Europe. They were brought up in Europe. They had all opportunity. They could be part of society. So you would think that they would be praising the God of Israel and feel proud to be born in Europe. But is this really true? So I want to use one example because there are many. But one example is a man came from Morocco with nothing, right? And he, be, he became part of Dutch society, he worked and he got children. And his son name was Bader Hari. Bader Hari grew up in Holland, speaks Dutch. You can even hear him speak with a very heavy Dutch accent. And let's take a look at Bader Hari. And just when he's beaten you upstairs, boom! In come the leg kicks, in come the front kicks, the step up knees. The guy has the full repertoire. There's not one weakness technically in his entire game. Oh, the leg hook buster is tagging! Spinning hook kick, the big kibosh! You see him getting stronger in fights. It has a lot to do with the fact that he's, you know, he's a punishing fighter too, so his, his fighters are getting weaker as, as he tends to get stronger. He has his rhythm. Oh, the turning back kick! The big kibosh! HDNet Fights presents In This Corner Featuring Bader Hari Hey everyone, I'm Rod Kruk and welcome to HDNet Fights special presentation of In This Corner Featuring K1 Superstar Bader Hari So Bader Hari is praised by the world as one of the biggest kickboxers ever and according to his record he is So Bader Hari Let's take a look at who he is thankful for. If I look at all the most famous Moroccan and Turkish 
kickboxes in the world. I don't even think there are kickboxes from Morocco um, because all these Moroccan fighters came from Europe. So Bader Hari was raised in Amsterdam, was always into fights and I don't, only, I don't even think he finished grammar school. So he ended up in the Dutch kickboxing school. He was born in Amsterdam, raised in Amsterdam and brought into a Dutch kickboxing school where the Dutch kickbox teacher taught Bader Hari discipline. And uh, I've been looking for the video clip because I saw it, but his trainer had to really be strict on him because he was too lazy in the beginning to even come on time. This Dutch trainer taught him how to behave himself and how to have discipline. So Bader, by his own admission, said that he didn't want to work for a boss. He didn't want to work, so he wanted to make a career in kickboxing. And he turned out to be a talent and he was trained and his training started to produce fruits within the sport. There we go. Uh, 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 so he already was winning prizes and he thought, wow, this is where I really can start to make money. So he was really trained by Dutch professionals. Come on, come up, no move, ready, come on. Our dame, yes, come up now, he choker. Come up, yep, yeah, you also, be the bottom miss it, jongen. And push her, 20 mal. Come on, yeah, that is him, Karim. Beuken now, okay? And low pass her weer. Yeah, squat, 20 mal. Squat, the jongens, don't you die by you. Come on. Come on, give it. Very good, Amir. Come on, no moves. That's it. Come on, buddy. Trap it, trap the rest of it. Warm and low pass her. Good job. And so Bader became rich and one of the most feared kickboxers of all time. So of course Bader was talented, but would he have had the opportunity to develop himself in this way? Because he was born in a country where he had all opportunity and he used it within his talent and there was a provision for him, there was an opportunity for him to become rich. So from someone who came from a poor family of immigrants who would have had no future in Morocco, he was brought up in a Western European country, right? And from nothing, from being a street boy, he had the opportunity to become a world famous millionaire. Well, you think he would appreciate it and love it and be proud to be called a Dutchman, right? So when he turned to international fights, he was so proud of Holland that he obviously had no choice but to praise the country that raised him up and come in, fight for the Dutch flag, come in with a Dutch flag and thanking everything and thanking the God of Israel. Let's take a look. And butter hurry. Our tale of the tape for this, our main event of the evening, heavyweight division. Bader Hari, 36 years old, six foot six inches, 253 pounds, with an identical reach of 81 inches to Arik Vajosic. Что все могло быть как угодно, но спорт мы прекрасен, что в данном конкретном эпизоде, пусть и нервном, пусть и сложном, но Батер... была интрига, была. And he's going to drag you into deep waters and look to finish you any way he can. One of the most dominant kickboxers of all time.
Here we go. Our tail of the tape for our main event of the evening for the world. So for all the years, all through the fights, Bader never once was proud enough to fight for a Dutch flag. So why do these people get offended if you tell them they are not truly Dutch? Because if you tell them you are not truly Dutch, they jump high and low to tell you they are just as Dutch as that you are, because Holland is not for white people. Holland is a multicultural society and we're all Dutch. But when it comes down to it, they don't want to be associated with Dutch people. They want to promote another country where they were not even born. So on the one hand, uh, they want to have all the rights and want you to call them Dutch. But when it comes down to it, they don't want to be Dutch and even the fans Thousands of Moroccan fans cheer Bader, not because he is maybe the better fighter in a fight, but only because he's Moroccan. So the conclusion is again, and this is just one example, that these people don't want to be Dutch. They are not Dutch only by law because they are born there, but they show by the fruits that they don't want to be part of society they don't they are not proud of the dutch flag or the european flag or wherever western country they were born they are just not proud of it they don't praise the god of israel they don't appreciate being born in these countries right? they even want to take their god with them the god that was in their country giving them nothing so they come to the god of israel to have everything but still praising their old god who never did anything for them so um, when i look at these people i appreciate that he's a good fighter i i don't think i can win <laughs> if i fight him but the thing is that i think these people are so unappreciative and don't realize where they are born there is no appreciation whatsoever right and that is the problem we all see through the west there are different people from different nations coming in making children these children are brought up and on everything not all not all but the majority they don't appreciate it and it is just sad but if you say anything against them then you're the racist, right? They are never racist. So what you see is that this ming uh, uh, it's it's a mingling, uh, a, a heap of different cultures, different peoples, all want to be called American or Dutch or French or English. But when it comes down to it, they don't feel any affiliation to the Dutch or the European or, or American or the Western people. In, in all that they, they don't want to be part of it and this is just another proof. God bless.